Thank you all for coming. I uh, really appreciate it. It's great to see a, uh, such a large group of people, and I think you're going to be really uh, come away really uh, inspired by the work you see today. Uh, to start the ceremony uh, of the awarding of the Kimberly Isles Scholarships, uh, uh, we'll introduce uh, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Teresa Lee. I also want to welcome everybody. It's wonderful to walk into a full room. I'm really looking forward to seeing what all of the winners sitting here in the front have been doing with their time here. It's always amazing to see the work that gets done in the, uh, in the department. And I want to thank Jim Hack uh, for starting the Kimberly Isle Scholarship Awards for these wonderful students and for being here. Um, he, Jim has taken a very deep interest in the activities of the school. We bump into each other at various events, more often as the years go by, which is wonderful. And um, he has honored her love of art without showing up for exhibitions by having the scholarship. But of course, this year, he also um, helped host a, uh, an exhibition of her work in the downtown gallery, which was wonderful and amazing. It was great to see the kind of work that, that she produced and that some of us, myself included, got to purchase some of it. it was, it's hanging in my office. You have to come see it. It looks great there. Um, and I love the fact that you come and converse with each of the students and encourage them in what they're doing and how they're doing it. To the students, you are all amazing. I mean, the art students blow me away. I can't do anything like what you do. And I find the work always exciting, inspirational, beautiful, just every kind of adjective. I hope it's what you're striving for, but it's certainly what you get from those of us who are not ex experts at it. Um, I want to congratulate you on getting the award you're about to receive, and I hope that you will continue to progress in your education and your development of your skills, and to be famous one day. We'll all be knowing about you. And I'll hand it back over to... Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Padilla. I'm a senior studying sculpture. My work focuses mainly on understanding domestic spaces, and behaviors in American culture. So I come from two totally different worlds, one that's Hispanic and from Puerto Rico, and the other here in the South. Uh, during my explorations over the past few years, I started to reflect on the interconnectivity between uh, these cultures and in order to more clearly understand who I am and what I want to understand about myself. I have a desire to communicate the significance of increased awareness of intuition-based decisions and how they change our development. I know that for me to understand my own intuition and spirituality alongside parts of my own culture, I have become aware that I would have to understand and engage with objects uh, beyond what's already familiar. Stories embedded within older objects motivate me. They inspire new narratives, environments, and history to be formed. I enjoy deconstructing and reconstructing all while keeping works cohesively aged. I try to allow play to influence choices made while creating and also remain consistent with my material choice. After examining my own surroundings, I realize my attachment issues to found objects and my inability to let go before I can create a distinctive life for them. I'd like to think that I take these objects home in a small way I'm providing that object a new home before I can recreate forms or environments with them. This ability to create a new part of that entity's history gives me inspiration to continue making work. Um, by providing these objects with narratives, I am in a way rewriting their history. These fabricated histories allow for more understanding behind the psychological effects of the unquestioned, which in turn represents a divergent reality. These expectations of normalcy are familiar in American culture. The objects or narratives evoke mindfulness. I feel that I can create conversations with more of a focus on conflicting thinking by intersecting found objects with 4D elements as well as industrial and natural materials. Um, I truly believe that we are living in opposing extremes. So for me, this need for opposing narratives only feels natural. 
It allows for more focus on the future by exploring the past. And once again, I'd just like to say thank you for this amazing opportunity. Uh, words really can't express how grateful I am. Uh, hi, I'm Ashley Bertner. I'm a senior from Knoxville. Um, I'm truly honored to be receiving the scholarship, and I'm excited to share some of my paintings with all of you. Um, up until last year, I hadn't made anything that I considered abstract. I also had not used oil paint or had a studio space, and I think a combination of all these things uh, really changed things for me and how I worked. It was a really exciting time. And uh, so I, before that, I'd spent my time just trying to hone in on my technical skills and really trying to realistically render the things I was interested in doing a lot of figurative work, mainly influenced by pop culture. Um, before I'd say I was timid and even fearful of messing up a piece, but um, the last year I really tried to keep in mind experimenting and risk taking and, and just playing with paint. So uh, this is an image of a still life I made in painting one and then reacted to months later um, for a painting two assignment. So that became something I really enjoyed. I painted over all my painting one paintings. I saw it as a fun challenge and a way to discover things I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, I think that there's something about already having paint on the canvas that takes the pressure off and alleviates that fear and hesitation that accompanies blank canvas. So now I'm just able to have fun with mark making and am not very concerned with the results. Um, I really have no idea how these are going to end up, which is exciting to me. Uh, sometimes they're really bad, so I'll just store them away for a while and come back to them later when I feel ready. Um, I'd say my process is very intuitive and emotional, so sometimes I find it difficult to talk about it. Um, I find myself feeling kind of self-conscious that my paintings aren't really about anything that I can explain to other people. I'm often inspired by all the things around me, but they're not really explicitly um, shown in my work. So, but what I like about my recent work is it feels really personal to me and unique, unlike what I was making before. So this is a painting that I really liked halfway through, but we just kept working, and I don't like it as much now, so <laughs> I'm trying to like consciously stop myself and um, just like figure out the areas I like and take photos and then make paintings from those small zoomed in areas, which is a fun way of working as well. Um, so yeah, now I'm just trying to figure out how to finish all these paintings and where to go next. And, Hopefully I'll figure it out soon. Thank you. I'm Jody Canfield. Um, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. And I'm kind of sick, so sorry if I sound gross. Um, I'm from Maryville, Tennessee. I'm a senior and I'm studying 2D art. Um, this is a work that I made that was inspired by John Mitchell. I think it was kind of a shifting point for me. Like um, at this point, my work transitioned more from representation to a language of abstraction. Um, I started researching artists like Helen Frankenthaler and Lee Krasner. Um, I was also drawn to the work of Gerhard Richter, and I began to look for ways to toe the line between representation and abstraction. And I think his work was definitely in my head when I was making this work about um, an old family photograph. Additionally, I'm fascinated by the language, by language and the use of language in my work. I like the idea of interpretation and um, misinterpretation. And a lot of the work that I make is influenced by words that I read or that I hear and I feel personally affected by. Um, recently, in an old filing cabinet, I came across a number of letters from my parents um, 
during the time when their marriage was breaking up and they spend the years of their separation and divorce and they're pretty hard for me to read but um, in response to these letters I made a series of works on drywall. I made all eight of these eight foot pieces in less than a month and that was kind of helpful for me to push myself to work really fast and uh, not overthink it and uh, just let it be an emotional experience. Um, I made them into these freestanding walls and they kind of became a lament of domestic violence in the house where I lived as a baby. They have this cheerful front, kind of, but um, they really turned into a disguise for my own feelings because um, ironically I felt the need to like hide what I was making them about from my mom. Um, it's difficult, you know, to think about the love that made you as one that was maybe this horrible thing. Um, but I'm working from my own history and experience and I hope to keep pushing my artistic practice to find a means of communicating the things that I le like to say most but never can seem to. Thank you. I am Emily Fastino. Uh, I'm a senior here at UT and I study art history. Uh, I guess I'll begin by kind of saying how I got into art history in the first place, uh, which was uh, here at the University of Tennessee. Uh, it started back in my freshman year. Uh, I signed up for an introductory art history course uh, with Dr. Campbell. Uh, it was Renaissance art to uh, early for European 19th century painting, and um, I. I remember these two paintings particularly well. Uh, they are, they exemplify what it is that really drew me in, uh, and that is cultural fact uh, hidden in narrative and subject matter. Uh, so the Uccello, for example, the Battle of Santa Mano, uh, while it obviously has an interest in linear perspective and there is a battle scene going on, uh, the hat is what interests me. So <laughs> it, um, I, it had to do with my first reading assignment. Uh, it was about a essentially the socioeconomic class uh, that the client or the viewer would have been a part of, uh, who would have had a background in mathematics, uh, and they would have been able to look at this hat and have a, a little puzzle to look at, essentially, because uh, you can see it it plays with two dimensional and three dimensional space. And uh, so when I look at this piece, uh, I don't see the Battle of San Romano, I see the hat. <laughs> but uh, this Charles Wilson Peel, uh, the exhumation of the Mastodon is more so about uh, discovery, uh, how we discover ourselves uh, and then define ourselves off of that and um, how we choose to preserve our memory. And uh, the conversation that comes along with that is really important to me. Uh, it's why do we want to be remembered that way, and where do we get those ideas from? And uh, yeah, it also leads into my uh, career interest, which is in fine art conservation, um, because I too am interested in uh, metaphorical, but also physical preservation of uh, memories and pieces such as this. And that leads me into this, which these are two pieces that I got to work with. Uh, at an internship opportunity that I had this past summer uh, at uh, an auction house, uh, Case Antiques. And uh, I got experience with art handling, but also with, um, I get to practice my methods of analysis that I learned in my art history classes. And um, the Dolly is one that was more uh, technical. I got to look at edition numbers, for example, and paper. Uh, the paper that it was on, whereas with this piece right here, the completely unknown, uh, it is more so a mystery. And so I get to look at all the little details on it and uh, try and analyze it stylistically and within a historical context. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't have had that opportunity, uh, it wouldn't have been on my radar if it wasn't for the faculty here at UT, uh, especially Dr. Hiles, who reassured me when I had cold feet. And um, yeah, uh, so 
Uh, I also, I'm so appreciative, and um, this scholarship will really be inspiration for me in my last two semesters at UT, uh, in the home stretch of my senior year, when I get senioritis. <laughs> and um, yeah, so again, I'd just like to say thank you so much. My name is Carrie Garrison and I am a junior in the graphic design program here at UT. I would just like to start by saying thank you to all the donors and to Kimberly Isles for the legacy she left here at UT and the opportunity that she's given all of us. So art has always been my passion. That's not something I ever really questioned. For as long as I can remember, I was drawing and making things, but everything kind of turned on its head for me when I switched into the design program here at UT. I switched kind of last minute, didn't really give a whole lot of thought into it, and really had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, <laughs> and that became very apparent to me on the first day of class when my teacher said, okay, open Illustrator. And I had never touched anything Adobe in my entire life. I'd never worked digitally. So this was the first project I ever did. and. I was lucky that it was abstract and that's something I enjoyed, but I started very simply learning the basics and working with simple forms and from there I kind of progressed and how to use that in a greater whole and how to use that to create emotion and meaning within pieces to try and give a concept and to portray something. So um, design was a pivotal switch for me because I think up until that point in my art making, I had been very complacent. I didn't realize it until I switched into design, but I was very set and very happy doing my own little thing in my own little bubble, just painting whatever I wanted to paint and didn't really think about what others would say because I could, I could validate my painting and my work if it made sense to me. But design has really pushed me to think about how to create for a larger audience and how to think about others' opinions in my work rather than just my own. Graphic design has been a great challenge for me, uh, but one that I welcome and one that has really pushed me in my art making and really pushed me to be a better creator. So I'm very thankful for this uh, switch that I made without rather thinking about it because it really has been a great change in my life. So I am still experimenting. Everything right now for me is about experimentation. And right now it's all about playing with this new material that I'm still trying to get familiar with and learning how to create kind of all over again, which is really exciting for me. Um, so it's been very um, validating for me to receive this award throughout my experimentation because that just kind of solidifies that maybe I'm doing something right. <laughs> um, and that my art making while I am experimenting is something that people have uh, noticed and have appreciated how much I've worked and how much I've experimented with on this. So, Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Parker Jenkins. Um, I am the senior in graphic design uh, who received this. I've actually been lucky enough to be here last year for the junior spot, so I want to say, oh, it's timed. Um, I want to say that I'm very appreciative of uh, this opportunity again, and uh, that Starting off, uh, if you remember last year, if you were here, I say that my work's really informed by human experiences, uh, storytelling. I'm a theater artist, so I naturally bring that in. Uh, this is the Celluloid Chains book cover that I was lucky enough to design, and mine was actually chosen and published on a book at UT Press. I'm doing it, Mom and Dad. So uh, I, I had the opportunity to do that. These are hand illustrations, which is great about graphic design. I can bring all other art forms inside of it and create something just cohesive. For the next one uh, was the Armenian passport redesign. I got to choose a country that I got to redesign the passport for, and I chose Armenia, a place that I 
would not originally have ever gone to, would not know anything about, some little country on the other side of the world, and I fell in love. And I, I, I remember weeping watching just beautiful documentaries about these people and finding out that most of their people live outside of the country in small communities dotted throughout the whole entire world. And so I wanted to reflect that through their passport redesign, that they're a landlocked nation without borders. So I, I got to do that and it was a very, it was a wonderful privilege. My next one was a Y-12 redesign. We got to work at the New Hope Center in Y-12 and we partnered with the Interior Design Group. And for my subject matter, I decided to choose the one thing they didn't want me to choose, which was the bombing of Hiroshima. And uh, I was told to stay away, stay away, don't touch it, and I ran right into it. And I'm so lucky that I got to, again, experience another story. Uh, what I wanted to do was abstract the idea of a bomb blast into something beautiful and then commemorate those people whose lives were lost. Not to make a statement of right or wrong, but to say this is lives that are lost and they should be memorialized. And so I did that here by abstracting lines and turning them into their names uh, to create a database to show the magnitude through human life and so that we might not repeat history again. My last one um, and probably my most personal one was a art installation I did called Things We Never Said uh, about two people that are very dear to me in a relationship who went through very hard times and I wanted to capture the idea of things that we don't say to each other in order to maintain safety, in order to maintain uh, a sense of togetherness rather than telling what we feel is on our heart. Uh, I took them into separate rooms. I didn't tell them what I was doing. I just said, do you want to try something? And they sat and I asked them to address the camera uh, of yourself and of the person that you love. And neither one saw either each other and they could do anything. And for 20 continuous minutes on either one, they went through this emotional journey. And I played them across from each other on transparent fabrics to create a dialogue, a dialogue that never happened between two people. And thus, I found, created a dialogue within me as I tried to guess what they said, which said more about what I was thinking than about myself. And again, combining my 40 art that I've done, my graphic work that I've done, my theatrical work that I've done, uh, the, one of the best experiences of my life. I'm so thankful that I had the chance to do this. And then I'll flip through some of those. And then finally, I wanted to end. I had the opportunity recently to be, I'm, like I said, I'm a theater artist, and I just finished up with the performance of Candide. Um, and it's, again, lends so much to my work. I'm so thankful to be able to be an artist here in what I do and on stage and combine that in everything that I do. One of my favorite actors of all time, Viola Davis, to paraphrase her beautiful words, we tell stories for the people that don't have the chance to let their voices be heard. That is our responsibility as artists, and that's what I want to do with my work. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hello, I am Olivia Lichterman, and I will be graduating in May with a 40 studio art major and an art history minor. So I started out as primarily a 2D artist. Um, I think that the learning the elements of composition through 2D has greatly um, influenced the work that I'm now doing in time-based work. Um, these are several um, drawings that I did on canvas um, based on family portraits and like abstracted. This is a good example of um, how 2D has um, impacted the work I'm now doing in 4D. Uh, for this project, I created um, a physical photo filter on um, plexiglass using acrylic. Um, and I took it to UT Gardens to um, film the flowers. Um, some of these, like the tulips, the, it was a windy day, so the movement was really great. Um, other flowers, the smaller ones, they actually blended into the um, acrylic itself, and so they were kind of camouflaged. Um, it, for the uh, original uh, uh, project, I uh, originally made it into like kind of a parody of this, um, of those old school like intro credit scenes where there was pretty music playing and uh, 
flowers would like blend into other flowers. And it was a cute video, but I think the real thing was um, um, working with these filters, and it's definitely something I want to revisit. This is the hive. Oh, to listen. So in the hive, um, you're meant to listen to this through a pair of headphones. Um, and there's a constant panning, as if there's bees flying around your head. This was the first installation I ever made, and it was really the moment that I discovered sound in the um, agency and the versatility that sound has in the space. This was originally installed um, in the closet um, in 105. And if you've ever been in there, you'll know that there's like piping and like wiring falling through the ceiling and there's like machinery and it's like a really industrial space. Um, I wasn't really able to replicate that in the documentation. But, um, so you have that and mechanical humming. And I took a chair and some lit candles and I, I stuck it in that room with some like very important equipment and I think I scared people. <laughs> but but uh, a lot of people don't seem to enjoy it. A lot of people said that they matched up the, the rhythms of the mechanical humming to the movement of the candles. And ultimately, this piece was meant to draw a connection between um, um, how an old way of life with the candles and the antique chair and the jar of honey and uh, our, like the new, the new industrial way of life um, and how both humans and bees are kind of um, being like um, getting sick because of you know, our industrial society. All right, it's a little slow on this screen, but this is an animation that I did. Animation is another thing that I can definitely see myself going into. This is all hand drawn in Photoshop, um, and it's just a couple of different layers that are looped endlessly. And this is actually a GIF. Uh, this is a picture of something that I was working on very recently, like last week. <laughs> and uh, I collected some, over the summer I went to the Smoky Mountains when it was very rainy and foggy. And I collected videos um, of that, and I intended to project them onto three separate walls, but I had some technical problems, and I ended up just like having two projectors and overlapping them the effect was actually much greater than what I had intended. So that's one thing that I really love about time-based art is I feel like there's just so much still for me to um, explore and to find in that practice. So um, that's my artist artistic practice this far. I'm super thankful to be getting this award. Um, and I hope to be doing more in the future. Thank you. I started at UT three years ago as just a painting and drawing student, with ceramics being nowhere in my sight. I had always been encouraged to cultivate my painting and drawing skills, and I never <laughs> had been discouraged multiple times to not do sculptures at all. However, I was still curious about ceramics, and I took my first ceramics class two years ago as a sophomore. Hapagord was my first ceramic conceptual sculpture and my first work in porcelain. It is a very personal piece about my insecurities as a biracial individual, and it opened up new ideas of how to incorporate my personal history into my art. For my sculptures, I look at traditional Chinese porcelain wares, drawing inspiration from intricately painted vessels and furniture, while often referencing ceramic pieces displayed in my own grandparents' homes. Summers during my childhood are very fond memories of visiting extended family members on both my mother's and father's side. Being half Chinese, the two halves of my family are very different from each other in disposition and in cooking, but um, my family, uh, they, they really value each other and their culture. In my work, I think about family, tradition, and cultures in relation to being biracial in, in order to celebrate these differences. However, 
because of my biracial background, I am also sensitive to the racial and social issues in America. Going back to my childhood, of course there was never a Barbie that looked like me or any normal human being. <laughs> but Barbie's new line of dolls called Fashionistas was a chance to change that. These dolls were supposed to be of different heights, sizes, and races, yet they had not and have still not created a short Asian doll, which inspired me to make my own. I have continued to use dolls in my work, partly for their whimsical and innocent nature, and partly for my own love of dolls as a child. Barbie is so recognizable as an international icon that anyone can associate her with capitalism, consumerism, and America, even though Barbies are made in China. <laughs> in contrast, the replica made of a Tong Dynasty horse was of course made by my own hand in America, but displaying these two objects together brings awareness to their histories and origins in relation to their current country's economic and political differences. So overall, with my ceramic work, I am continuing to explore my personal history, Chinese culture, and Chinese American social and political issues, and with art, I aim to celebrate my heritage in an increasingly diverse country. Thank you. Hello, my name is Caroline Rokleff, and I'm a senior here at UT, and I'll be receiving my BFA in studio art two-dimensional with a focus in photography. So in the past two years, as I found my voice as a human rights activist and an openly queer person, I've primarily focused on photographing people that have been marginalized or continue to be marginalized in society and as protests to those that oppress them. And um, since my coming out last fall, I have been mainly inspired though to photograph the LGBTQ community in Knoxville here which has led to my recent, my current show that is October 26th at Gallery 1010. It's called Variegation, and this is Coletta, and she is the fabulous cover of it. And you'll notice that most of the photos in this series have the name of the person that is being photographed and their pronouns. And this is to give light to the gender spectrum in the LGBTQ community to serve as an educational purpose, but also while acknowledging that there are not just two genders, there's a wide range. And when I'm not focusing on queer photography or um, human rights photography or documentary, documenting, documenting history in the making, um, I'm photographing and experience, experimenting with fashion photography. And this is my current um, photo shoot with Pose, People of Style and Education here on campus with Scoop Magazine, which is also produced on campus. And this work was inspired by Gordon Parks, who is one of my absolute favorite photographers. He was a civil rights photographer during the civil rights movement, but in his free time, he also did fashion photography. So this aesthetic was pretty much inspired by him. And as a human rights activist, I'm always at a protest or a rally. You might have seen me, maybe not. I'm the one with the big camera asking to take pictures of everyone. Um, and I'm always there documenting, documenting history in the making. So here's a photo from the Women's March 2.0 in January. And here is one of the Families Belong Together rally, which was quite recent, about I think, the beginning of August. So. And that's about it. Thank you. Soviet Union, actually, in a small town in Siberia named Kalachis. Um, as a child, I always loved art and I wanted to study art, but my parents didn't want me to be a starving artist, so that's why I pursued my career in economics. And uh, after getting my diploma eight years ago, um, I got a student work visa and moved to the United States 
to uh, Latin work things. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> shortly I discovered an Erman school of arts and crafts and started taking uh, classes there and uh, I rediscovered my uh, love for art and I understood that love is actually art is my uh, purpose in life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, then um, I thought that my parents are so far away, so I actually can do whatever I want. <laughs> so and, uh, I, decided for my, uh, I decided to start my art education at Walter State Community College. So, and then I transferred to School of Art. So, um, after taking my first printmaking class at Walter State, um, I fell in love with the medium, uh, the combination of uh, control over the medium uh, when you create matrix and element of surprise and sometimes unexpected result when you pull the print they were very fascinating to me. Um, <clears throat> I never thought that uh, I have very good imagination so all my work is actually about my life and uh, about myself. So I just share my feelings and emotions um, my experiences and I let the girl um, interpret the, um, what they see. Sometimes I share my, I reflect on my experiences and my relationship with nature, or um, I just share my dreams because I see a lot of them. So my uh, recent work is actually evolves around my Russian heritage. Um, <clears throat> I asked a lot of questions about uh, me being Russian stuff like that, so I just decided to create the work and just answer with it. Um, and sometimes I use traditional Russian imagery in symbols. Um, and this is my um, last animation based on true life. saying, wow, you know, this is a treat. This is something I look forward to again uh, this year. It's, it's hard for me to believe that we're already uh, in the process of recognizing, recognizing the second cohort for the IELTS uh, scholarship. Um, wherever Kim is, I can tell you uh, she'd be dancing right now, uh, just uh, celebrating everything that she saw for every, every one of you. Uh, it was a, these are really just wonderful uh, presentations. I, I love seeing all the work that you're doing. Um, and for me, once again, it's uh, clear that members of this cohort, um, they, they've demonstrated why they're held in such high regard by both the scholarship committee as well as your, your faculty and mentors and computers here at the university. It's a wonderful, wonderful job. Last year I had this, I felt this need, like I always do, to tell you something about this Kim Miles person. Mostly because she started out an awful lot like uh, all of you. Um, and I, I want to tell a story. This is not in my thoughts I wrote down here, but it, it comes from Ashley and Joey. Because uh, if you know uh, Kim's background, she was uh, into abstract art. And uh, uh, what I was going to say, uh, both of you kind of came 
throw out this idea of like, when is it done? Am I, am I finished or is it not finished? And uh, I want to say that there should be no worries about uh, knowing where the finish line is. I'll tell you a story that takes two minutes. And it was early in uh, Kim's transition to from graphic arts to fine arts. And uh, we had two homes. We had a home up in Washington and one here. And I would spend as much time in DC as I could. I had a lot of work to do for anyway. And um, this, there was, over this two day period, I came home and um, she was probably pouring a glass of wine or something. And I said, what were, uh, what's up today? You know, she had been painting. So she said, go take a look. So I went downstairs to the studio and looked. And there was this 30 by 40 inch um, canvas that she had painted. It was a beautiful painting. I just I looked at it and I just fell in love with it immediately. And, uh, and so, you know, whatever happened, happened that night. And then next, the next day, out on the, I'm out, she's painting. I came home, same sort of deal. You know, I came home and said, so, uh, uh, you know, what were you up to today? Did, you know, uh, Feel any successes or whatever, she said, go take a look. So I went downstairs, went to the studio, and looked, and there was this other painting there. And it was pretty cool too, but I remember yelling up, hey, where's the other one <laughs> that, that was here yesterday? Where was that one? And she was coming downstairs and she said, it's under that. <laughs> so, so you may have several paintings underneath the ones that you finally finish, that you feel like you finish, but I don't think that there's ever a finish line. I think for any of the material that you guys have presented uh, today. Um, I guess one of the reasons why, I, you know, last year I wanted to talk about uh, this whole idea. She started off as a graphic artist from, uh, here at University of Tennessee, uh, spent most of her, her life uh, doing that work. But um, uh, I truly believe that her heart was in the things that characterized what she was doing toward the end of her life. And that was this move back into fine art. And the message is, what you're doing right now may be setting the stage for what's really in your heart for what you really want to do as you, as you move through your professional life. So it's, for me, it's a reminder of how important it is to stay true to yourself um, as you finish all your academic preparation and as you make your way through professional life. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, it, it's, re it's remarkable how that, that, that true calling is going to pull you back. I know it pulled Kim back. Um, so, I, and, the, and the final thought really on this really is I know that from letters I've gotten from uh, scholarship recipients, as well as uh, conversations with some of you and some of your mentors, that the support you'll get from the scholarship is very important. And I, I have no doubt about that. But don't forget the most important thing about today is, uh, and that's the thing that's going to, you're going to take with you for a very long time to come. And that's that you uniquely distinguish yourself through your own talent, your passion, your creativity. That's what I called Sparkle last year. You'll remember some kind of theme. And it's being recognized at this event. Just look around. There are all the people here to celebrate uh, your accomplishments. So. Uh, uh, congratulations to each of you on your respective accomplishments, and I hope uh, this is just one step toward fulfilling, uh, toward fulfilling life in the future in the arts. So uh, I think at this point, Professor Wilson and I are going to down some. All right, now we will give out the. Uh, <laughs> the words, we found them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the first goes to uh, Maria. 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 Maria.
Kerry Garrison. This endowment provides support, but also validation, which is, as Jim said, is really, really important. Um, each were selected by their major professors for stout, outstanding accomplishments and future promise. So on behalf of the School of Art, I want to thank Dr. Hack, uh, his and for his and Kimberly's vision for creating this wonderful opportunity that will have a lasting impact on the lives and the creative endeavors of these awardees and future awardees for many, many years to come. So thank you all.